Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, on the High Street, there really are very few things sadder than a boarded up storefront because it's a sign of a dream denied, a lost opportunity and of course lost jobs. Now I won't deny that in Stirling City Centre we are finding it tough. On Friday afternoon I spent some time with Lisa Sneddon, the owner of the Bluebell Tea Shop. I recommend the Bluebell Tea Shop to all of you when you make your uh, visit uh, obligatory, indeed, visit to uh, Stirling. Um, but she told me of her concerns over the state of Stirling City Centre, uh, and those concerns are all too visible, by the way, to anyone who will visit the city centre. The pressures on businesses in the city centre, um, perhaps compounded by the temporary closure of the Kers Road Bridge uh, crossing, which is the bridge is being replaced as part of the uh, electrification of the railway. Um, but it is undoubtedly much quieter in the city centre of late, with a discernible fall in uh, footfall. Uh, King Street in Stirling is particularly a sad sight. Now, this is the street that leads up to the castle. Now, Stirling Castle is one of the most popular tourist attractions in the entire country, and it really should be a lively thoroughfare. But since the loss of Macari's department store, which, by the way, had been on that site for 123 years, there has been a definite drop in the street and in the number of businesses that uh, have been there to come in and take up the slack. The reasons that Macari's gave for closing, well, they cited the Scottish Government's rates system. They specifically mentioned the, business, the large business supplement, um, because it wasn't really a large business supplement, it was really a large property supplement. Um, basically, for Macari's, the, the, in one year, the, the, their large business tax went up to 27 pounds, and that was the straw that broke the camel's back. We've had, in the last two weeks alone, at least six other stores close in the city centre. Um, Toys R Us have been mentioned, uh, Maplin, uh, the Boozy Cow is uh, uh, the Fat Cyclist. Interesting names, but they spoke the fact these were these were individually owned and independent businesses. And Mr Sims Sweet Shop. These have all closed their doors for good, and I cannot deny that I am concerned about this. Now, one of the things uh, that uh, came to light yesterday in a report entitled the Retail and Leisure Trends Report from the local data company was that 520 units on the high streets in Scotland have closed down in the last year, more than anywhere else in the UK, including Greater London. I already mentioned uh, what uh, David Lonsdale, the Scottish Retail Consortium Director, had to say about those, those numbers. If I may talk now about what is undoubtedly the case, which is that there is a way to save our city centres. Uh, they can have a very bright future. Stirling City Centre can have a very bright fu uh, future, but, it, but, but the city centre needs to be skillfully repurposed. And, and frankly, I will work with anyone who will help bring Stirling City Centre back to its former glory. The fact of the matter is the landscape is changing, and bricks and mortar retailers must move with that change. People are buying online. It's not only about price. It's also about the convenience of shopping, when and where the consumer chooses. It's simple and relatively hassle-free experience. And Lee Sparks, who is a professor of retail studies at the University of Stirling, has called on retailers to demonstrate a more imaginative approach mm. to customer experience mm. and to create new concepts in retailing which stimulate consumers to make their stores a must-visit attraction in its own right. And he's talked about some retailers which have not done a particularly good job. And frankly, he cited Toys R Us. He said that Toys R Us came to Britain. When it came to Britain, it was innovative and new. Yet Toys R Us, the Toys R Us you see today, is pretty much, he said, the same as it was when it first opened. It hasn't grown or offered the consumer anything new. Um, the current pressure on retailing, he said, is weeding out poorer retailers. We will be undoubtedly left with a smaller retail landscape. If it is smaller and becomes concentrated, so it provides people space, uh, it provides space that people want to use, then it will be a better landscape. And I concur with what he says. It's my view that we need to see our city centres differently. We need to do much more to bring people to them. And that means for me that businesses need to work together in the uh, business improvement districts that have already been mentioned. We have one in Stirling City Centre um, to make the city centre a compelling an irresistible uh, uh, proposition, a positive destination. And that means creating an experience which supersedes the perceived benefits that consumers may, may have in mind uh, uh, when they shop online, mainly convenience and price. 
Now, the high street needs to be more about experiences, entertainment, food, and with independent and re uh, stores and, in and retail experiences which people want to have. And what we can't have is more of what the Americans call cookie-cutter department stores, where you can close your eyes and spin around and find it difficult to identify which town you're actually in. We need more variety. And we need to entice people not only to visit city centres like Stirling City Centre, but choose to live in them. And we may need to make that possible. People living in the city centre will bring life and vibrancy to an important civic space. And public policies which create the right conditions for the revival and prosperity of the high street are now overdue. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Yeah, thank you.